Um, okay, so this actually will tell you a little bit about me also. Um, this is the kind of things I want to go after. Um, obviously, world-changing things, right? Um, I believe that that's all scientists should try to do, is to solve the problems of the world, not to teach. The human brain evolved to solve problems. So when I, I believe, and even at high school level, so I'm touching a little bit on the educational components, because I think that's important. You know, if you, if, you, if you go into a class and you teach a student about symmetry, I, I remember I hated it. But if you go into a class and you said, OK, we've got a problem with CO2 emission, and I'm going to show you how we're going to solve this, and I sneak in symmetry, they like it because our brains evolved to solve problems, not to get A's. And, you know, we, we've forgotten all these things, and I think we need to come back to it. Um, these are the problems we need to teach them. And we need to make a connection between what we do, what we're passionate about, and how we can get out there. And yeah, you can tell them that they're going to make a lot of money when they solve these things. Um, so the problem I think we have today is, I think, I, I love this little book, whoops. Um, I, I, we've run out of ideas. We're, there's no more big ideas out there. I mean, where is the next transistor? We're, we're, I know Google is great and Twitter and tweets and all of that, but we need really big changes in, in science and we're just not putting enough effort into doing that. Um, I follow my passion, uh, and um, that's led me to believe that, that these problems can be solved, that we can make these leaps. And it's not because I think I'm great, it's because that's what I like, right? I do this for the fun of it. Um, the fact that it's going to benefit the world is great, so I've, I've chosen that. I remember telling my daughter, she asked me, what, what, what should you do in life? And I said, well, have fun and do something that that's, that's leaves some benefit. And she said, well, Dad, I want to be a surfer. I said, well, shook me up for a while. And I said, well, I'm not sure what the benefit is. Maybe I'll entertain, but yeah, f do that. You know, find a world will find a way to feed you. And so I'm lucky. <laughs> I, I'm lucky that, that, that my passion is something that's actually useful and that you fed me. Um, so what I want to tell you is that we're going about this the wrong way. Um, we need to deal with these problems of sustainability. Um, and we're doing what Einstein told us to do, which is to you know, not, not think about the future constrained by what we know today. And so we're trying to come up with solutions based on science we have today. Folks, we can't do it. it it's, if, it we need to tackle the tough ones. And all of these molecules I've shown here these molecules run the planet, and I was able to create this cool graphic. Um, <laughs> took me a little while to figure out how to do it. Uh, but it's really cool. I, I mean, this, this, is, this is methane. It's representative of fossil fuels, nitrogen, oxygen, water, CO2. If you really want to deal with sustainability, these are the only molecules you should worry about, right? We convert fossil fuels to energy at about 50% efficiency, right? even less than that. And the problem is we don't know how to control that molecule. Right? CO2, abundant. We don't understand the chemistry of that molecule. I can't tell you what you have to do to convert it efficiently into a fuel. What I will tell you is that it's not a leaf. It's a machine you need to use. You need to build and use a photocell. A photocell is about 10 times more efficient than a leaf. And you need to figure out how to put that electricity into CO2 and make it into a fuel. That's a machine, right? It's not a leaf. A leaf is horrible. We should not be, be using biology to, to make commodities. And I know that's controversial. Um, nitrogen, this feeds you. Half of the nitro nitrogen in your body comes from this molecule. And this consumes about 5% of the world's energy, right? This conversion of nitrogen in the gas to nitrogen it puts into your body consumes about 5% of the world's energy. It doesn't need to. 
And it does, all of this is a problem because we haven't figured out the science of these molecules. And so what we do is we heat the crap out of them. That's how we get them to react. So hydrocarbons, right, we burn them. Nitrogen, we heat it up to, to get the hydrogen, we heat up to 1,000 degrees, and then we, we take nitrogen at, 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 at um, 400 degrees and we do something with it. If we understood the science of those molecules, we could do that at room temperature. Hydrocarbons should burn. We don't need to heat them up. When we heat them up, we get engines that are 20% efficient. You should flame on right now. You should burn up. Obviously, you don't, and I'll tell you why. But if I could get this molecule to, to burn at room temperature, you and I would have, we could emit half of the CO2 that we do. Just this one molecule would, would, would solve the problem and understanding the science. So how do we go about doing this? Well, for a big part of what you, how you solve something is knowing what not to do. And, and I'm not going to spend much time on this slide, but I'm going to make a statement that's, that's controversial. Um, and I hope some of my academic colleagues don't see this, um, because they, they, de they decide who, who funds me. Um, so, so, you know, a lot of people say, well, life does everything right. Nature knows best. Well, not really. What nature knows is look in the mirror. It knows how to make complex things. It, it doesn't really know how to make energy and and materials, commodities, efficiently. It wasn't designed to do that. It didn't evolve to do that. It evolved complexity. And it gave up energy efficiency and atom efficiency, converting atoms efficiently to other atoms. It gave that up billions of years ago. And here's evidence for it, right? We could make our ammonia from nitrogen, right? The old-fashioned way, cow down, right? Eat, eat materials, that, that uh, legumes that have generated aerial ammonia. Well, we don't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore because it's simply too expensive, right? And here's what life does. You know, I won't go through this equation, but it's incredibly inefficient to convert methane to ammonia. You notice it uses all these molecules. Here's the Haber process, which feeds you, developed in the 40s. Very efficient, horrible looking, but this is what you use. And fuels, by the way, is 10 to 20 times that scale. So you're, if you can't do this biologically, I don't think you're going to do fuels. So we need that. And so how do we think about getting there? Well, whoops. It's actually pretty cool uh, when you think about it. Whoops. Um, chemistry is really about those bonds, the, the problem with those molecules is that the forces that hold those atoms together are incredibly strong. And every one of those molecules that I showed you are called the holy grails of, of chemistry. And as a result, very few people are working on them anymore because we can't get funding for it, we can't get tenure when we do them, we can't get publications when we do this because you're just not going to succeed that well. So what's the problem, right? Chemistry is really, you can think about chemistry two ways. Either as, a, as something you want to put in a bottle, right? You manipulate atoms to make a drug, incredible stuff. Uh, so you can feel that, you can see it. Um, but there's another part of chemistry called reactivity, right? How do you get from here to there? So you can put that in. Well, you have to go through what's called the call activation barrier. You don't flame on because there's a substantial barrier for you to burn up. Right? I can make you do that by lighting you up. Or I could drop this barrier. And there's ways I can do that. Right? But, but this is a strange state. While I can feel this, this state that I have to manipulate so that I can go over it faster is really a vibration. It's imagination. How do you control that? That's what we've got to learn to do, is to control that vibration. How do you manipulate a vibration, something that's maybe not even real, right? Well, this is where what I do comes in. And that's why it's so exciting for me, is that I get to control something I can just imagine. I mean, that's really cool. So how do we do it? We control that by what we call catalysis. And here's an example. It's a complex molecule that's causing this vibration to occur. And here's another. Interesting example. So here, we've actually built this molecule. 
So one way to break the bonds of methane is imagine trying to take a spring with, and, and cause it to break. Well, you could vibrate it and let it go off by itself, or you can grab it and pull it apart. And what we've done is design catalysts, molecules that can come up to the uh, CH bond of methane. And you notice we grab them and manipulate them. And we never really let it go free. Uh, that's what we need to do. The problem is these bonds are incredibly, incredibly uh, difficult to break. They're called the holy grails for good reasons. But I think that with enough effort, we should be able to address these problems. Um, and I'm pretty selfish about this. I mean, you know, we just had the, with the world's largest storm. And I'm actually fairly conservative about this global warming business. I don't know whether it's real or not, but it's like an insurance policy. We have the science to deal with this, or the, the people. We need the resources. We need the resolve. We can develop technology that allows us to live the way we live and emit half the CO2. But we've got to deal with the holy grails. That's about you know, getting people excited about it and doing it and making sure that our kids grow up and, and not have to swim in Florida. Um, so thank you. I hope I've been able to communicate. <laughs>